Did you know the same companies making cheap snack foods are raking in massive profits while the health of many suffers? That's what an international group of health experts are claiming in a scathing report published in the medical journal The Lancet on what they call ultra-processed foods, otherwise known as UPFs. So what is ultra-processed food and how might it be harming your health? Well, the term can be applied to lots of foods we eat every day. Specifically, it's industrial manufactured products made from refined ingredients and additives designed to keep consumers spending their money, turning a profit for corporations. Some examples include frozen foods, sodas, deli meat, packaged cookies, fast food, energy drinks, and more. The study involving over 40 global experts points to strong links between UPF consumption and chronic diseases like obesity, diabetes, heart disease, depression, and others. From a review of 104 long-term studies, 92 found increased risk of one or more chronic illnesses. Michael Widener, a geography and planning professor at the University of Toronto, says profit pushes corporations to keep these foods on shelves. Ultra-processed foods are, are rather profitable because uh, they can last on a store shelf for quite a long time. Uh, there's quite a bit of demand for them because in many cases they have high levels of sugar and, and fat. Uh, which make them quite tasty. And so uh, there's a lot of consumer interest in these kinds of products. The Lancet series mentions that more than 50% of the $2.9 trillion paid to shareholders by food companies between 1962 and 2021 came from UPF manufacturers. Now, corporations often fight government regulations to keep their profits rising. And experts behind the study say that corporate strategy is a major barrier to public health policies. But Widener says government intervention may be the best way to fight against worse health outcomes. I think we want to be thinking about government interventions like taxing uh, ultra processed foods slightly differently than other kinds of foods, but that can't be done by itself. So I think focusing on younger uh, individuals, children, and thinking about ways that uh, sort of normalizes healthier options as an affordable and accessible choice would be two good places for the government to start. Widener also attributes the consumption of UPFs to lifestyle and time pressure. So what we're seeing is that in fact, a lot of people are making decisions to buy ultra processed foods because they don't have as much time in their day to prepare a whole meal. So if you're commuting an hour and a half from Hamilton to Toronto and back uh, each way, that's going to be less time for you to, uh, at the end of the evening, prepare a dinner that's full of fruits and vegetables, perhaps, you know, whole grains, those kinds of things. 